Hello, welcome to Revelator Elf. Uh, it's uh, miserable outside as we're approaching Easter, uh, a little bit like the West Ham world really. Um, so the football club is in a state of disarray really. They've got the threat of relegation, uh, fans revolting uh, at the board hander apparently with each other as well. Um, lots of uh, uh, uneasiness uh, with the club and even politicians getting in on the act and uh, pointing the fingers at these horrible West Ham fans uh, that we are. Uh, if only they knew the real story. Okay, so the real story is this. What has actually been happening behind the scenes at West Ham? Well, essentially uh, there are two main factors here. The The team, from the team point of view, they've really underperformed for the last two years. Um, as individuals and as a collective unit. Um, we've had two managers that have, um, haven't have really set the world alight um, and Slavon Bilic lost his job unfortunately and then David Moyes came in uh, as a short-term replacement uh, to you know get everything uh, back on track and it kind of worked for a little bit but then it's kind of fallen off the rails again. Um, so there are another eight or so games left in the season and it's, it's going to be a tough ask whether uh, West Ham could even survive uh, to fight another year uh, in the Premiership. However, so that's the team. The behind the scenes, uh, it's all to do with the club and the owners of the club, the, the board. And uh, this is, um, you know, created lots of frustration, lots of anger uh, within the fan base. And what's happened is that the owners... The current owners, David Sullivan and David Gold, uh, came in uh, a few years ago and uh, bought the club at a, a knockdown price, if you like, uh, when the uh, club got into financial difficulty because of the global financial crisis, and which affected the um, Icelandic owners, the Icelandic uh, consort consortium, which were heavily involved in the financial affairs or financial business, if you like. So their business was affected, so the club uh, business got affected. Solomon and Gold came in and bought the club. Uh, now, little did we know that their intention the whole time was to buy a Premier League club to sell off the ground, earn, off them, earn money from that, and then uh, move into a rented um, stadium, uh, cutting down costs, uh, increasing uh, profits, so on and so forth. Um, so really all they've done is come in from with a real business head and all they're looking at is the bottom line, profit margin, and that's about it. Now, some people might say, well, actually, this is really good. This is really good business. You know, in this day and age, in this day and age of uh, just spending money left, right, and the center, this is actually a good idea. Unfortunately, it's not. It's a terrible idea because what has happened is that it's ripped the soul out of the club. See, a football club is not merely a business, okay? It is about a community. It is about a fan base. It is about a connection between player and fan, manager and player, about the club and the community. Once you take that club out of that community, now, yes, it is a global community now, we appreciate that, but essentially you still have the traditions of that club in a certain area. And it's almost like a mecca for fans all over the world, wherever they want to come from, to go and see that club, okay? To go and see that club at home games. Um, once that's taken away from it, then it's all a little bit lost at sea. The club then moved to um, play in a rented stadium uh, at Stratford, um, at the London Stadium, the old Olympic Stadium. And this was a kind of a failed legacy from uh, the Olympic Committee and uh, Sebastian Coe because they all wanted, oh, this uh, Olympic Stadium is going to be a fantastic, wonderful for athletics, wonderful for this, wonderful for that. And basically it fell on its uh, derriere. Um, so... There were football clubs uh, in contention to take over the, the London Stadium and make it a, a used entity. Okay, so this is what happened. West Ham beat off uh, Tottenham Hotspur uh, to take over uh, or occupy the uh, stadium. Unfortunately, what's happened is that the deal was done too quickly. 
Um, the owners went in, they knew there were lots of problems with the stadium, the, with the seating, um, you know, uh, the actual feel of the place in terms of the West Ham presence, uh, heritage, uh, traditions, all this kind of stuff. But also stewarding. Now stewarding has been a big problem uh, at the London Stadium. And lots of fans the last two seasons have been complaining about stewarding. It's not effective enough, it's not proper enough and not fit for purpose, as is the general stadium. All of these concerns have been um, largely uh, ignored by the uh, the owners. So this is what's built up this frustration. Now the whole point of selling Upton Park, selling the home and moving to the London Stadium was that the uh, the owners now claim that their ambitions were always to take the club to the next level, fight for European places in a few years. But that's not how it, it was delivered uh, initially. It was all about promises. Yes, we move to the new stadium and it'll all be fantastic and we'll all be uh, moving into uh, European glories. Uh, all words to that effect. Um, so this is what fans came to expect, if you like, that, you know, raise the expectation. When uh, the club were at Upton Park, th there wasn't that expectation. Yes, people got angry, people got frustrated with the club, with the lack of investment and sold players, this and that. But, there, you know, everybody knew their lot, as it were. As soon as the owner said, no, we're going to move here and everything's going to be fantastic, everybody thought, well, here we go. <clears throat> Less costs, more profits, increase in TV and revenues. What does that mean? Cha-ching, cha-ching. The club are going to be able to go out and reinforce the squad and buy some world-class players in a world-class stadium. And this is what the, the mantra was, you know, to get people to buy season tickets, to, you know, to blindly follow the, the crowd and go to the stadium. This is what happened. So everybody went over, lots of problems with the stadium, owners who couldn't really give a monkey's about the, the fan base, a disrespect of the fan base, even came out on social media and media reports and newspaper columns, you know, almost uh, in many ways uh, belittling the, the fan base. <laughs> this has created a huge disconnect between the club, the owners, not the club really, the owners uh, of the club and the fan base. And now what's happened is there are there are differences of opinion within the fan base itself. You know, some are really ardent, some are vitriolic, others are more passive, others may still have a little bit of sympathy for the owners and what they've tried to do, others are just completely bewildered by the whole thing. Um, and others are just really saddened by the whole experience. And I kind of fall into that latter category. I'm, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, but I'm just really bewildered and saddened by the whole uh, situation. Um, the team hasn't been reinforced. Transfer dealings have been absolutely ridiculous. The, the club structure within itself to um, make transfer deals, proper transfer deals, um, hasn't happened. Um, so now the club are trying to backpedal a little bit, they've tried to make a couple of apologies, they've tried to address a few fan groups, uh, and they've, uh, they've come out with a 5,000 word um, uh, letter, if you like, to the fans to try and address some of the issues. But let's not be kidding ourselves, uh, none of these issues are going to be rectified immediately. So the only rectification that can be done relatively quickly is for mass investment into the squad and that's not going to happen anytime soon I would not think uh, to really turn around this squad to actually make it uh, into a, a, a force to be reckoned with it's going to take over a hundred million pounds uh, easily 150 million pounds you know and you know this sounds ridiculous figure doesn't it especially with West Ham and I think it's a ridiculous figure as well but unfortunately these are the market prices for you know the world-class players if you like and West Ham just simply aren't there okay yes they've made over 40 million pound profit in the first year at the London Stadium which is ridiculous for a football club because it should be a lot less and most of that should be reinvested What's happening is that the owners have uh, bought the club, but they've taken on the debt. So they've lent the money to the club. They receive an interest for it, payment. They're earning money from the club. 
their their value in the club has increased uh you know fivefold uh, sixfold um so if they ever did decide to sell um they'd be you know very very rich uh, ludicrous ludicrously rich uh even more so than they are now so it's um and who's been uh, failed this whole time well it's the fans the fans have been uh, you know, led down the garden path and, and nothing has materialised. This is what creates the, the frustration, the lack of investment, the, the myths, truths, the lies, um, you know, the, the big PR sell, the big uh, um, pulling the wool over, eye, over fans' eyes, and they've been caught out, they've been found out, and this is the problem. They've also um, not communicated properly with the fans. So this has also created mass um, hysteria, if you like, within the fan base as well. Now, lots of people are on YouTube and they're on Twitter and Facebook and everything. And yes, and the, you know, the, the chattering classes, uh, if you like, within the fandom world are, you know, just going, going into overdrive, uh, as, you, as you might expect. Uh, but, you know, People outside of the, the West Ham bubble have not really paid much attention, especially a lot of the media, uh, the radio broadcasters, uh, certainly the print media, and also the, the politicians and the Football Association. However, within the last couple of weeks or so, it seems as if there th things might be changing. More and more journalists are starting to understand, actually, this uh, stadium is not fit for football. It's not a footballing stadium. This is what the fans have been saying the whole time. Lots of other journalists are saying, well, actually, the investment uh, in the club hasn't been right. Um, the investment in the team hasn't been right. And also the transfer dealings have been a complete fiasco. Other journalists are saying, actually, let's look a little bit closer at David Gold and Sullivan and see exactly how they're running this club because it isn't being run very well people are starting to think well we're justified here okay so politicians why are they getting involved well unfortunately the last game of the home game at uh, London Stadium against Burnley we had uh, four or five uh, pitch invaders if you like people ran onto the pitch and they weren't violent they weren't uh, attacking players or anything or using rude gestures or anything like that it was purely as a as a protest uh, against the current predicament, uh, predicaments. Yes, sack the board, get the board out, all this kind of stuff. Now, uh, again, the club could have acted more charitably uh, in regards of those fans uh, and maybe given them a five-year ban, a ten-year ban, something like that. No, they've slapped them all with a lifetime ban. It's a lifetime ban for some fans who are quite young, Yes, and some fan, a couple of fans who were a little bit more in senior years. It's a difficult one here because they should be banned for coming onto the field of play, but they were allowed to. It was a massive stewarding uh, problem. The, the stewards are not capable of doing it. This is a massive problem for the stadium owners who just really wash their hands of it and they're not really claiming any responsibility. West Ham are saying, well, it's not us, it's them. Um, so, but who gets it in the neck at the end of the day? It's the fans. And then the mayor of London comes out and says, guess what? Uh, who's at fault here? Yes, it's not the club. It's not the London Stadium. It's certainly not us as, you know, the, the mayor of London office and everything like that. It's those horrible hooligan fans. Yes, they've reared their head up again. And it's just like back in the 70s and 80s when those nasty hooligans uh, run the place. Absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous statement to make. Ridiculous um, uh, notions. Uh, and somebody who's totally ill-informed about what's actually going on at... Um, the London Stadium at uh, West Ham. However, that's his public figure. The other side of him is also thinking, well, actually, West Ham, I've got this... Um long-term contract at uh, London Stadium. They're only paying two and a half million pounds a year or whatever it is, um, ridiculously cheap. So this means that the London Stadium are losing money, millions of pounds every year. So basically Khan uh, and the, the the rest of the, the the political elite and also within London Stadium they're thinking well, actually we need to get West Ham out of there or they need to pay a lot more money so there's another agenda here that's why they're attacking uh, West Ham there and also the fans um, so who is the end loser here yes it's the West Ham fans yes they protested yes um, many went up to the director's boxes 
and, and a few unsavory characters, let's say, I don't know, I'm not going to comment really, that allegedly threw coins and objects at the uh, director's box, one caught Sullivan, I don't know. Um, those have been identified on the CCTV and also slapped with a lifetime ban. I have less sympathy for those because really, you know, you've got to draw the line at any kind of uh, uh, shenanigans like that, any kind of violence or anything like that, it can't really be accepted. However, in many ways, this protest, this demonstration at the director's box has actually drawn the attention of the media, the politicians and the club to certain issues like the stewarding and everything like that. But they've again reacted in a really bad way. When they could have been charitable here, they've kind of reacted. They put up the barriers. They're um, moving uh, people out of their seats, uh, disabled people out of their seats to make prevent fans uh, from uh, going to the director's box again. Okay, but why should fans suffer for this? Why should disabled fans suffer for this? Again, it's a ridiculous notion. Also, they're Adam, the, the, the owners are Adam. They are going to attend the next uh, home game and possibly the, the remainder of the home games as well. Well, this is just fanning the flames even more. Just when we need somebody to calm everything down, take themselves out of the situation, to appease everything, so all the fans can just unite, and that's what we want to do. Everyone wants to unite and just get behind the team and just support the team for 90 minutes or plus stoppage time, whatever it is. And it's just um, just getting worse and worse and worse. So this is what's happening at West Ham. Lots of issues. It's not about four or five people or four or five thousand uh, pitch invaders, as some might have you believe. This is about deep-rooted issues within the club, uh, within the fan base. And um, most of this has had all been caused by the actions of the owners themselves and also by a failing football team uh, and the individual players as well. Yes, of course, fans have had their, their part to play as well um, and they've uh, also contributed to the malaise and contributed to the furore and everything. Um, but, you know, they are reacting to a set of uh, situations and uh, lots of concerns, lots of frustrations within the club. So this is the latest uh, with West Ham. Um, so the next game is against Southampton. Um, let's see what happens there. Um, more protests possibly outside, hopefully nothing inside the ground. Uh, or, you know, the FA could uh, finally get off their ass and come up with a verdict themselves. That might mean that the London saying and the FA decide that uh, all future games, uh, having for the remainder of the season, will be paid behind closed doors which isn't great news really. Um, but the main uh, order of business now for any fan, anybody uh, invested in the club, is to urge the team on to get points, uh, get wins, get results. You know, actually performances are a little bit out the window now. Let's just focus on the result. Win ugly, win rough, doesn't make any difference. Points, points mean prizes, and the biggest prize of all is staying in the Premier League. Thank you.